Hi everyone. Welcome to episode one of Indoorlands. Indoorlands uh, is not Roller Coaster Tycoon. You might uh, be noticing. And uh, the reason that I decided to play something different was, well, this was on sale, and uh, I had been eyeing it for a while. I wanted to check it out. And uh, I figured, why not uh, actually, you know, record myself checking it out? I've never really played it before. Uh, I did play it a little bit here. You can see uh, yesterday... I unlocked some stuff. I played it for, I don't know, it's, it says I played for three hours, but honestly, uh, some most of that was just me looking at it and kind of screwing around. I wouldn't say that I've actually played it for three hours. So, pretty new. Uh, I want to, you know, play it together. Uh, I don't want to just dedicate my channel to Roller Coaster Tycoon. I always did plan to play other games. Uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon is just sort of what I started playing, and it's been the easiest to produce videos for, but I, I did want to do something that was like uh, real-time playing. After playing uh, this game for a little bit, I don't believe it's the type of game that I'd be able to do, like the sort of complete park uh, with an outro and the music and all that stuff. Uh, it's just not that type of game. And so I think uh, this is a better format for this game. So let's uh, begin. Now I, I'm going to leave the game volume up, but... Uh, <laughs> So this game is built with the Unity engine actually, which uh, if you're familiar with Roller Coaster Tycoon World, that's what Roller Coaster Tycoon World was built with is Unity, and uh, it's not the best engine to be using for a type of game like this with all of the different AIs, uh, but what uh, these guys did, which is, uh, I can't remember the name of it now, let's see. Pixel Split, that's who makes this game. Uh, what they did is interesting in that uh, they actually split the game up into sort of different zones. So you have like a higher level zone that gives you sort of an overview of your entire park. And then you have the individual halls as they call them, which are actually rooms. Uh, you know, and so when you load a room, it can just work within the room and basically at any given time, uh, you know, they only have one room loaded that's real time, you know, and then they have the overview, which is a lot less demanding. So this game overall is very system friendly. You can run it on a lot of PCs. I'd, I don't remember what the uh, minimum settings were, but it's uh, nothing even close to what Pan Planet Coaster requires. And, you know, it runs really nice as a result of that. Uh, it, it does have a very, um, I guess you could say, low poly look to the artwork, but, uh, you know, that's fine. You can still make some interesting stuff, as you can see. Uh, but it is a lot more limited than... Uh, I would say Roller Coaster Tycoon or uh, Planet Coaster, definitely. So, we're going to just play the game. Uh, I reset the tutorial. I did start the tutorial, but I've reset it for the purposes of uh, making these videos. Welcome to your first indoor park. 
I will teach you all the basics to build a successful park. First, you need to learn to look around in your park. Uh, yeah, that would be useful. Uh, open the panel in the top right corner to see your current goals. When you have finished them, we will continue. So kind of like City Skylines, this is a goal-oriented game where as you like uh, do challenges and increase the size of your park, you sort of progress in level. And then those levels sort of, uh, you know, go uh, towards unlocking more stuff or allowing you to unlock more stuff. Uh, as you still have to unlock them with research points, but you have to also unlock the ability to unlock stuff with research points. Sort of like how uh, City Skylines forces you to progress in uh, city size. So what it's, uh, the sort of goal thing is here, and uh, we completed one right there. So now it just wants us to... Uh, you know, move the camera, rotate the camera, and zoom the camera. So here we go. We're going to move around. There we go. And uh, rotate here. Yep. And zoom. All right, we're done. Good job. Now let's get to the building your park. Building menu can be found over here. There you will find many different types of halls. To start things off, we need some halls and hallways. Make sure all the halls are connected with the park entrance and that their front sides are not blocked. All right. So, one fries building, two slushy buildings, one nine by nine ride hall, which is like a flat ride hall, 20 paths, which is like path squares, one popcorn building, one balloon store building, one horse carousel building, which is a ride, actually, and uh, one pins building. So to start with, I'm going to actually build the um, horse carousel building here. First, I'll just uh, expand the entranceway here. So the paths, the way paths work is really interesting. Uh, this, the, so this would be like the overview area that I was talking about. Oh, let's pause the game. Uh, and so this is your sort of starting land here. Let's zoom all the way out. You also have to manage the parking and expand the parking, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, but so this is sort of your starting land, and a lot like city skylines, you have to buy the territory, and this is sort of your maximum territory. It goes all the way out here. Uh, lots of land to buy, but what they give you to start with is pretty small in this area here. So this is like the overview uh, view, and I would say this this view here is sort of closer to original Roller Coaster Tycoon and uh, Park Architect. However, the scenery options in this area are extremely limited, and what the pretty much the only options you get for scenery are these down here on the paths, and uh, you can either build like an empty path, uh, you know, you can build an empty path with a particular type of flooring so let's pick uh i don't know this uh stone here does that look good i don't know let's rotate no it doesn't really go with this building uh i'll go with this there we go all right so we can just sort of build the there we go so we replace the floor And looks like that, right? And uh, let's go one bigger. Oh, see, it doesn't have a... There's like an invisible window over here or something that causes your cursor to lose focus. See, watch. Uh, following, following, following. Oh, doesn't follow anymore. Yeah, there's an invisible window here. Probably for this lady. Once she goes away, I'm pretty sure that'll go away. Um, so, so now I have like a larger area here. Now, let's say I want to decorate it. 
Well, the options for decoration look something like like this. So see, it like replaces the path uh, with the decoration, which is, you know, it's okay, but it's also pretty limited. But once you get into the ride areas, there's a lot more. Now we can also do the walls here. So, you know, uh, we're, we got some water stuff here. So maybe make the walls blue. Okay. Oh, I'm see, and uh, you gotta make sure you're on empty here, or you're just gonna start making scenery everywhere you put the path. So that's sort of how this uh, overview scenery works. It's very, 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 very simplified. However, uh, it's good enough to kind of have some fun with it. I think so. This is kind of the entrance area we're gonna go with. Uh, so the first thing I wanna build is this horse carousel. And that's right here. And I'll place it right like that. Now you can name stuff. So I'm just gonna remove the one cause I hate having numbers. Now these tags here are interesting. This is how the game handles uh, like demand basically. So guests come in and they have a bunch of different types of tags that are associated with them. And those are basically the things that they're gonna look for in the park. And if they can satisfy all of these different tags, then they become satisfied and they're a happy guest. And if they can't satisfy these, then they're unhappy guest. And so the horse carousel has the horse carousel tag the kid friendly tag, the ride tag, and the round ride tag. And so once guests come in, we'll take a look at their tags. Next is the utilization. And I'm pretty sure that this is the number of guests that can be on it at any given time. Although it has visitors down here, so I'm not entirely certain on that one. Same thing with handling time. I'm not sure if this is the ride time or the time that it takes for guests to board the ride. Attractivity is sort of like the general scenery of the area, although I wouldn't exactly call it scenery. It's more of a like attractivity rating for a certain area and certain bonuses and stuff can also add to that. It's not only limited to scenery and how good stuff looks. Uh, the ability to change prices, we have to unlock through research and then you can move it and sell it. And here's your price forecast and profit and stuff so that looks pretty cool uh, you don't open or close anything you just uh, build it and it's automatically open the only thing you can open is the park which is closed at the moment but I'm on pause so that's fine so next I'm going to build some uh, pathways going up here basically the layout I think I'm going to go with is I'm going to have like a hall and then hall and a hall, a hall and a hall, and there'll be like everything in the center will be sort of like concourse y, uh, food based type stuff. So for walls, uh, should I keep it the same? Yeah, I'll, I'll keep it the same. Everything can be the same for this central area here. We'll expand that way. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to build is this 9x9 nine nine hall. Uh, those are here. So these are ride halls. So that's what it looks like, but then you can also theme it and stuff. I'm going to zoom out a bit here. Maybe have it face this way. Yeah, maybe I want it here. Yeah, I think I want it there. Right like that. Okay. There, it's pretty happy with that. Now, we don't have a name for it yet. I'll wait till we build a ride on it. Uh, maybe we should just go build a ride right now. All right, yeah, let's build. Let's go in and we'll check it out. 
So this is the more like detailed area where you get to uh, play a bit more with scenery. Uh, if you want, there's also pre-made scenery stuff. So we'll look at that. We'll look at that. Um, so first thing we want to do, put a ride. Now, only have two flat rides available that can place on here. The Crown and the Salto. Uh, I mean, might as well just go for a Crown here. That's what it looks like. Now, <clears throat> from here we can paint the ride like this, uh, but there is no way as far as I know to select the theme. Yeah, see these, don't, that's just the border and stuff. Uh, you can only select the theme, it seems from the outer edge of it. So we're gonna exit like this. I mean, like you can build a theme, but see if we go like this and we go blueprints, uh, it gives us some pre-made ones here, which are pretty cool. So here's Dark City. Uh, Havilator, Hav Havilator? I don't know how to say that word. Uh, no knights here, another sort of medieval one which kind of goes with crown I'm thinking one of these two given that it the name of the ride is crown uh, tree greenhouse that one's pretty cool too uh, kind of fitting for the ride and then uh, alpha base which is a more sort of space themed one here uh, I think maybe tree greenhouse is the is the way to go it goes with the floor too see it's got the same floor okay tree greenhouse it is so apply that there we go it's done so select our stuff here connect this out oh, that's the wrong one yeah there we go I have to say I do like this uh, background music though I'm not sure if you can hear it let me I might just leave that up. I, th I think that should mix okay uh, while I do stuff. I'll turn it back down if it becomes a problem. Anyway, so yeah, there's our ride. So now that that the uh, that I selected a blueprint, I'm going to go back into it here. And uh, it puts you in this like sort of shows you only what you're coloring by default, um, which is okay, but it doesn't really show you what it's going to look like. So I kind of prefer this other one and then switching to that if I want to see. Uh, you also can't rotate the camera with this open for some reason, which is annoying. <laughs> Uh, anyway, okay, so making the base, let's go with a base of, uh, sure, that color. Yeah, that color. Okay, color number two is what? So color number two is these things. Uh, I'm going to go with the same color, the same base color here. Let's see, color number three, yeah, same thing, same base color. Alright, number four, let's swap, switch it up a bit here. And uh, this is where I think sort of like a light yellow will be okay. Oh, I want all the arms to be that color there. Yeah, same thing. Eh, dark yellow, sure. Eh, maybe. 
meet these like uh no it doesn't look good oh we'll use that color this is like the uh sort of lattice stuff in between uh Switch it up again with like the gray, maybe. Gray goes with pretty much everything. Blue for the cars. Maybe a darker gray for the insides. And uh, finally, the hydraulics. I'll leave that yellow. Let's see how this looks. I might actually go with a blue for that uh, base color there. Turquoise or other. Sort of like that. Yeah, not bad. Uh, so then you can also change like the, uh, you know, these bars and stuff here. So could come and say, uh, yeah. So we can cha can change the wall painting, which I'll leave it. I, I think that fits the theme. Um, the fences here, the hall theme uh, for this one. I don't know. There are quite a few. See, I wish you could rotate the camera while you're picking this stuff though, so that you can see how it blends in with the area. more stones than like wood. But the stone stuff doesn't go with it so much. So I'm just going to go with the uh, standard gray here. And you get a pick of music. Uh, Moonlit Forest. Yeah. 
Scheiß. So they use the same demand system as rides as they do in uh, the stalls and everything. So everything is unified in the same system. It's not like you have to figure out like, oh, do they like ice cream when it's raining or things like that. It's like everything is just guests will come in. They might want salty food. They might want gentle rides. It's all the it's all the same from the game perspective, which I think is uh, a neat design decision. Uh, makes it all really simple to understand. There isn't like a whole bunch of different layers of different guest logic that you have to keep track of depending on what sort of domain you're operating within. Get a put the balloon store here. And again, same thing. Uh, you know, guests will have uh, tags that retail stuff that they want as well. Uh, so they wanted one more of these buildings, flush ice buildings, we'll call them B. And I use A and B instead of 1 and 2 because 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and stuff, that's the default. Uh, so by using A's and B's, it allows me to know that I've like changed the name of something instead of just having like a one or a two there. Popcorn building. And I, I use that same principle in uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon. I hate having uh, numbers. I much prefer to have a letter if I'm gonna have multiple versions of a building. All right, so you will also need some maintenance halls to keep your halls well maintained and your hallways clean and of course you will need some toilets of course um, yeah so let's uh, name the building before we move on here so we completed all those goals and now we've got a new set of goals here uh, to build two toilet buildings one small cleaning building and one repair building so this is basically just the uh, all the maintenance type stuff. Uh, so let's put the, well, not, I mean, I guess toilets aren't really park maintenance, but, uh, you know, so I'll put the, the toilets here right at the entrance. And uh, same thing with the building, the uh, cleaning. We'll put that there too. And the uh, repair building as well. Large halls like your ride hall are empty at first and require a bit more fine tuning. First start by selecting it. Oh, I already did this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, click on the ride hall. Yeah. Here you see detailed information about the hall. With the blueprint button you can apply preset decorations or you can enter the hall to do that yourself. Yeah, I know. Enter the ride hall. Okay. I did this already too. I guess I shouldn't have jumped ahead. I should probably turn this down. Okay. Uh, inside the hall you can customize details, decorate freely, and when there is space of course build a ride. After you have chosen a ride, leave the hall and return to the park. Uh, yeah, I already did that. Apply a blueprint or build decorations. Build a place. Oh, man. See? Oh, I really. Now, this is something that the game could definitely improve. Uh, yikes. Definitely something the game could improve is uh, having the tutorial account for this type of stuff. As uh, that's frustrating.
Did it count it? No, see it doesn't count it. Now, there is sort of like a silver lining here in that if I switch to this ride, now let's open the park and see how your first visitors like it. Click on your entrance and set the park capacity in the ticket menu. So now I can just switch back to this and it'll be okay. Uh, and, and that should progress us and we're okay. All right, so that's fine. Uh, but yeah, that tutorial could definitely use some work in accounting for the fact that you've already done certain things uh, when you encounter them. But before moving on, let's... Uh, set up the buildings we had built earlier uh, so toilets one will become toilets a cleaning building one will become cleaning building a because I'm certain we'll have more than one of those you can see uh, they have a radius here which is interesting toilet two will become toilet B and uh, same thing with the repair building. They've got a radius as well. So we'll call that toilet building or repair building. <laughs> toilet building. Got toilet buildings on the brain. Uh, repair building A. All right. So that's that. Got a ride. Everything looks pretty nice, I think. Uh, we'll go look here. So we've got to set the park capacity to a hundred. Where do I do that? Is it here? Oh, this is your like outdoor colors too, which uh, is, is kind of cool. You can set that. Let's set it to, I don't know, orange and green. There we go. Cool. Uh, Ticket price, yeah, so so you wanna keep th this like bands and ranges and stuff changes depending on the attractivity of your park. So this green band will actually expand higher as your park gets better and you'll be able to raise your ticket price. Uh, whereas if, you, if I did it right now, see right now I can put it at a maximum of seven, but this will increase and I'll be able to increase my ticket price and not make anybody angry. Uh, you can actually define your park capacity, which we're just going to put at 100, because why would you not want it at 100? Uh, to the left, you see the attractivity of your park. Having decorated halls increases the activity of your act attractivity what a weird word attractivity of your park the most but more stores and rides will also help. The amount of visitors your park will attract corresponds to this value. To the right you see the current amount of visitors in your park. This can not be higher than your current attractivity, but it is also capped by your transportation capacity. So it's kind of like your soft ca soft uh, guest count in, oh no I didn't mean to do that. Let's put the, bring that back up. The uh, soft guest cap in Roller Coaster Tycoon, except it, this one is like more of a hard limit than just uh, a restriction on how many guests will, are going to come. This cannot be higher than your current att attractivity, but is also capped by your transportation capacity. If you want more visitors, increase your attractivity and build more parking spaces. Yeah, so that's where the parking space uh, expansion comes in here. Be able to raise your guest cap. Uh, let's see what we got for feedback. Nothing because I'm on pause. Uh, and there's our financials. So I use a fair amount of money building this stuff. The only uh, goal I have now is to have uh, visitors. So let's unpause. And uh, yeah, park's open. Everything's good. Yeah, so you don't actually open the park, you just have a capacity, and you'll see they actually uh, drive in here. So you'll see that the guests in this view are very simple. They're just simple uh, geometric shapes, but the detail does increase when you go into the actual uh, ride area here. So we'll enter the hall. And... Uh, 
yeah. <laughs> so something pretty cool that I noticed is they actually go around and they actually uh, like check all the restraints and everything. Like uh, you can also control the ride. So you can tell the ride to move its arms or start the engine and you can skip the uh, stuff here. You can lock the en exit and entrance to the ride and uh, open and close the restraints and operate the rides yourself that's a really neat addition and then of course uh there are ride programs and i'm assuming that there's mu there must be a way to like record a ride program and do it yourself uh you know but i'm not sure how to do that yet but but clearly there's like a list of programs here so the, you know you've got default but i don't know how to make a new one yet i haven't figured out how to do that uh, and then we've got our, oh, this is just settings. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. We got some camera views up here. Uh, oh, what did we do? So we can change to uh, in person or, or this is just like a free cam, like uh, first person fly cam basically it can go wherever we want here. Do, 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 you know, do some, uh, circles very nice but uh, let's let's switch to the ride cam all right there we go. Yep, that's what riding one of these is like. Not bad though. Uh, the animations are nice and smooth. Uh, like I said, it's very low poly in terms of uh, the artwork, but you know, uh, it does the job and it, it is a interesting game. Like it's um, original. I'll give them that. It's not just a, cause I find that most theme park games just try to basically kind of clone RCT, you know, and then add like a spin, uh, like uh, beyond park kind of comes to mind in that term and that they didn't really do anything different. They just made RCT and then simplified parts of the game that shouldn't have been simplified. And, uh, you know, I haven't played it, but I watched videos on it. I, it is a game that I will play at some point. Uh, when it's a little cheaper, I'll, when I can get it on sale or something, I'll try Park Beyond. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I'm really enjoying this, you know, in terms of uh, what it is so far. I think it's really fun. That was good. It has a, a nice motion blur effect to it where, like, it really does simulate the, the feel there. I really did find that that was pretty decent in terms of the motion simulation. They seem to like your park, but it is important that you keep the demands of your visitors in mind. Let's start by opening the visitor panel. All right. Uh, so let's just pause it for the moment until we actually have to do something here. Oh yeah, uh, where's the visitor panel? This thing. Yeah, okay, so this is the thing I was talking about where they have like different tags. Here you see all the demands and reactions of your visitors and how good their demands are fulfilled. With time, your park will attract more visitor types. Each type has other demands and will require you to build new building types. Let's try looking at some people. You can find the visitor tool over here. So this thing here is the visitor tool. 
and then you can uh, basically select people to get details and as you can see this shows you all the tags they have uh, and then the green ones are satisfied and so this guy wants greasy food and he likes Vikings um, you know he's got this much patience same same idea as uh, RCT except with this tag based system very cool you see, each visitor has their own unique demands. They will only visit each building once and will try to fulfill as many demands as possible. They get hungry and thirsty the longer the visit takes and of course also need to go to the toilet. They will also have many different reactions to special occasions. Example, seeing dirt or having many f demands fulfilled. Keep an eye out on those reactions to maximize the happiness of your visitors. You can also directly influence the amount of their demands by changing the ticket prices. Therefore, click on your entrance again. I don't know if that's really, therefore, click on your entrance again, period. Okay. I don't know. It just doesn't feel like that works, but uh, we'll just do it anyway. Open your entrance panel by clicking on your park or, your, or the flags on the left. Right, so we gotta get out of this visitor mode. There we go, open this. So now you see this band has grown and we can actually raise the price. The price slider is always divided into a green, yellow, and red part. Staying in the green means your visitors only have their normal amount of demands. Changing it to yellow or red doubles and triples their demands. It can be lucrative to price the tickets as high as possible, but be prepared for very demanding visitors. Be, but be careful those divides change depending on your overall happiness. But be careful these divides change depending on your overall happiness. Yeah, that's what I was saying. So these things grow and whatnot. So keep checking on the price and keep your visitors happy. So I can now raise my price to nine instead of seven. Very cool to at least 10. Oh, I gotta set it to 10 for the, the sake of the tutorial. I guess I can go to 10. <gasps> oh no, I'm yellow now. To keep up with all the demands of your visitors, you need to research. First, you need to earn some research points. This is best done by surveying visitors. Build a research building somewhere where a lot of visitors will be passing by. Each passing visitor will generate some progress. So this is something that's a little interesting too, is that research is an actual like building in this one. And it's actually a two by two building. Now it says put it somewhere where a lot of people will be passing by. Um, <clears throat> I guess here would be somewhere. Uh, I mean, They'll be passing by here a lot, just not yet. So I'll just put it there. Uh, let's see, in terms of building, I'll put this. And uh, I don't, too dark. There we go, goes with these. One more there. Yeah. Uh, so I assume we'll probably have more than one research building. I'm not certain if it uh, stacks or not, but I assume it probably does, given that it's a building. Generate one research point. All right, we're going to have to unpause for this. They got little uh, tablet game type pop-ups here. Boop, boop, sounds, money sounds, ooh, money. I don't know what that icon was. I'm gonna have to learn all the different icons. What are these faces? What is that? Like meh? That's how you feel about my park, man? Oh, you'll see.
Now, I haven't generated anything in terms of research, and I know I'm supposed to be doing that, and that's because nobody is walking by that stuff, uh, which I already knew was going to happen. So what I'm going to do... Oh, I didn't want to put it there. That's okay. Here. Delete. Yeah. I'll put this pink hallways like this. And yeah, we'll go all the way around. Like that. And uh, gotta get people going out this way. What better than a roller coaster hall over here? That should do it. Now, I, I've gone through the tutorial already once before, so I know that there is no roller coaster hall request in the tutorial. So it shouldn't mess with things. Uh, now, see, the roller coaster is like part of the blueprints here. What goes with our pink hallway? Dynamite? Probably not. Expedition skull? Probably not. Fantasy Tour. Ooh, here we go. This looks nice. Ah, it makes me think I should continue to use the... Uh... Yeah, we're going to use that. <gasps> Could not purchase. I might not have enough. Oh, I just barely don't have enough. Almost there. We'll just wait it out. New notification. Many dislikes. People hate to wait. Only 1,000 more to go. Now that includes the ride, which is pretty neat. We got this train thing here. We'll, ride. we'll be riding that for sure. There we go. Alright, it's done. What was that called? I totally missed it now. Uh, Fantasy Tour. I'll just name it that. Fantasy Tour. Uh, yeah. Go in there. There we go. Let's hop on. What do we get? Three? What's three? It's like a backwards cam. Two. Here we go. All right, this is the first uh, roller coaster cam on my channel, 3D cam, pretty exciting. In indoor lands. Oh, look at that bridge. It doesn't go anywhere, though. See, I'd never designed something like that that just goes off into nowhere. It's got to go somewhere. Gives you a nice little sort of tunnel, though. Get some brakes. Oh, second chain lift. So I haven't tried designing a coaster in this yet. I don't think we'll design a coaster in this episode. I think uh, I'll end it after the tutorial um, and save the rest of this game for uh, another episode.
well, not the most exciting coaster in the world, but it, uh, it was pretty neat. All right. Very nice. So what do we got going on here? We got 10, uh, percent towards a research point still 20% need to uh, get more people I think more parking people eh, it's going along though Oh, now here we go. So we can actually, buildings like upgrade. So now my uh, balloon store can now be upgraded and I can either add shop displays, which give me a plus 10 quality influence, a salesman training, which uh, adds 25% to the price, or solar panels that reduces the upkeep cost to zero. Now, yikes. Apparently my money is not doing so good. Um, I feel like price is the way I want to go here. Now I assume that that's a price increase with no negative impact. I'm sure this money thing will recover. I'm not too worried about it. I mean, I just built this giant roller coaster, right? What's the price on this thing? It doesn't let me know. How am I doing on the ticket? See, I can raise my ticket price to 11 now. The sound of money. It's not bad for Unity though, I have to say. At least these guys didn't fall into the same trap that uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon World did, where they tried to compete with uh, Frontiers. Was it the Cobra engine or something like that? I don't know. It was specifically designed for games like this, though. Unity just doesn't have the efficiency. But uh, it does this one well. With the low-poly artwork and the localized uh, way that it's rendering here, where it's only rendering people. Let's go take a look at the people here. See how that looks. Yeah, so see, we got people going here. Let's go to the free cam. Yeah, see people walking around. Oh, look at that. Hey, not like they're anything better than what you had in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3, but, uh, you know, they don't need to be. When you, when you have consistent artwork, you don't need everything to look great. These people look like they're from Star Trek. 
beam me up. Uh, yeah, so, you know, when you have consistent artwork, you don't need, uh, you don't need everything to look great. You just need everything to look consistent. And so because they have the low poly artwork, the low poly everything, but they, you know, you can get away with low poly stuff and uh, have it look okay as long as everything looks the same. Oh, we got an upgradable building here. Fry stall can be upgraded. Uh, I mean, I think capacity is the the no-brainer there. But fifty-eight percent. Oh yeah, I wanted to, uh, oh my goodness, we are not doing good on the money front. feel like I should be making a lot more money than I'm making. Another upgradable building. I like that sound. Doop, doop. Increases handling time, which must be, that must be like the turnaround time per uh, person. Decreases wear rate. Uh, I'll say I'll decrease the turnaround time here, or handling time. Unhappy face. Uh, almost got our research point. 80%. Pretty sure soon it gives me, uh, starts giving me rewards too, like monetary rewards. So hopefully this won't be a problem to continue the tutorial. I'm definitely at like a guest cap though. I need to expand something. Probably the parking lot. Eighty four percent happiness though, that's good. Park impression. Oh see, yellow is not good. Almost there.
like just barely within that radius. Now we need to open the research panel. Click on the highlighted menu. Unlock one research node. Uh, so it shows you what you get here. So this one comes with milkshakes, waffles, small warehouse room, sweets, and a chaos, which is a ride. Here's the parking. Gives you a park capacity of plus 100. This is one that we can't get yet because we need an activity milestone of three. I'm going to do the uh, parking. The main way to advance your park are milestones. These correspond to visitors in your park, attractivity, and your visitor level. While the first two will happen automatically if you increase your numbers, the visitor level requires your visitor to have a good park visit. When you have achieved, your, achieved a milestone, you have to collect the rewards. Open the panel on the top right and gather your rewards for the finished milestone. They will get, grant you money and research and allow you to unlock even more in the research menu. So here we get our rewards, we get research points, and money, and uh, yeah. Yeah. More money, more research. From time to time, you will also be offered contracts. These require you to fulfill certain conditions, but will, re will reward you with either money, research, or even some timed boosts. Sometimes there will also be devil contracts. These will damage or hinder your park in some way, but will also reward you. Choose wisely. Uh, we don't get any devil ones this one this time around so let's see what we got build one halls with the theme city i don't really want to do that create 20 tags in your park i'm not really sure how to do this i failed this one before have 25 visitors without the negative reaction so hungry oh that sounds doable let's do that you now know how to effectively build and manage your park but now you are on your own good luck oh great Okay, so here we go. Retrieved Attractiveness Milestone 2. Alright. So if we go check out the parking here, you see it's expanded. And our guests can finally go up. We've got some an upgradable slushy bee. Uh, let's do the capacity. So there we go. Uh, let's just pause it quick here. So now we've got this, uh, all these things, and this is basically the game now. The tutorial is done, and uh, this is the type of stuff that you will see in the game. So I think that is pretty good. Uh, that was a fun intro to this game. I will definitely be continuing uh, this park I figure what I'm going to do with this game given there there isn't a whole lot of content yet is uh oh like we'll we'll finish off tutorial park here and build the whole thing and uh build each and every uh tutorial one to completion and I'll just do it in multi-part episodes uh whenever I sort of feel like playing this game so I hope you've enjoyed this and until next time uh keep building and enjoying games Talk to you later.